Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Lesson Picks Live. Um, we are so happy early Valentine's Day. We're here. here. So we couldn't do this tomorrow because, you know, it's Valentine's Day. Nobody would show. Uh, not even us. We would be busy. So It'd be very boring. Very boring. Just Nobody would be black there. backdrop. Yep. So we have a special guest today. We've, we've got Darla Ashton uh, from Carmel School. Carmel Schools or Indianapolis School? Carmel Schools Carmel. Mm -hmm. near Indianapolis in Indiana. Um, and uh, she's, Beautiful area, by yeah, the way. Really wonderful pretty. hotel. One of our favorite. Like, <laughs> what is the name of that hotel? I I couldn't tell you. It's, I don't it's know. one of those autograph collection uh, really Marriott hotels. It's a, Patton's is the only reason I ever go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Animal, yeah. My so, um, actually, I used to, believe it or not, I used to work in a former life. I worked in Carmel for uh, Conseco at the insurance oh, okay. company. There. So I actually have a, a pass there, huh. um, but it's changed a ton. It is. Uh, there's a lot more money there than there was when I was hanging out. It's all new and fancy. Yeah. So I am. Um, I'm excited to see everybody. If you are in the comments, say so. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Hi, Kelly. Hi. And, so um, Kelly is one of the people who over the last couple of weeks has pushed and said, you got to have Darla on Lesson Picks Live. Uh, Beth is another. Um, Alyssa Wern is another. And so I went and I looked at what you've been doing recently because you've like struck a nerve with all these people. Mike Morata. I think Mike Morata might have been the other person who said that to me. Wow. Um, and so you posted on um, you posted on. Um, that was the AT roundtable or the, the, it was the Monday thing that I saw. It the right? New Hampshire, for Mike, it was the New Hampshire, um, I don't know, it was kind of like an AT co cohort, I guess, the episodes that he posts about AT tools. Gotcha. And so I, I watched uh, Kelly, it turns out Kelly's a fan. So, um, so um, I watched your talk and um, we, you use our stuff a lot. So if we've got somebody making that big of a of a splash using our tool that much, we figured let's have her on and, and talk about it. And Beth, you were there too, right? You were at that uh, presentation as well. She was Excellent. there. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. And we're gonna we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna talk with you about uh, visual schedules and other visual supports. And you've got um, a pile of stuff that we're gonna show. I printed them if we need them. We might um, okay. we might talk about some stuff happening on the comprehensive literacy uh, board. Just because we made a little bit of, uh, I don't know, Darla, if you pay enough attention to see the oh, yeah. little, little video we made of the of the um, the little girl on um, uh, on that board, and I won't I don't won't go into names. So I have I have pictures. Um, we'll go there after. We'll, we'll go there after. Okay. Um, yeah. That's where she, she had a request, and Lori was good enough to film herself making the request, which is crazy. So, um, so let's let's get started. So Beth, and, and if you jump in. Um, on any of this, okay? But we'll we'll get started on all of this. I'm gonna rearrange us. We're just winging it tonight. Very much so. Very much. <laughs> We're so. all full of love. We're, that's right. We're yeah. We we thought it was Valentine's Day. So, um, so Darla, uh, give us a little bit. Uh, I know you're you're an AT coordinator in uh, Carmel, but give us a little bit of background on what you're doing out there and what you're what and you're trying to do and who you are. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, so I work for Carmel Clay Schools. I've been with them for about 10 years. And prior to that, I was with another school district for about 10 years. Um, in my current role, I'm the AT coordinator, but I also sit on our, what we call our behavior team. So there are three BCBAs um, and another behavior consultant that sits on our team. And basically anytime in our district, anybody is struggling with a student or a behavior in the classroom, they can place a request to our team. And one of us will go out um, and do some coaching or consulting, depending on what the situation calls for. Um, so sometimes that can look like, you know, you'll just stop in and do a couple of hours and or, or maybe you'll just have lunch with the teacher and, you know, chat some things out. And other times it looks like us going in and and being there daily to support a student, sometimes for six to nine weeks at a time. Wow. Um, whatever the situation calls for. So, wow. um, yeah, I mean, lesson picks kind of came into my life at the perfect moment. Um, I had been, and I, I, I kind of went over this with Beth last week about, I had been struggling with the other tool I had been using to create visuals. They're not Voldemort. They're just board maker. It's okay. <laughs> it, it, I was having some difficulty. Um, and I was in a situation where I was working with a student who really was requiring some outside of the box thinking. 
I was having to create a lot of my own materials. Um, I was the only person for majority of the time during the school day that was working with this student. Um, I just didn't have a lot at my disposal at the time. And so I was having to create a lot of things on my own. And he was just, again, very outside of the box kid. Um, and so it was all, I mean, it all happened in this beautiful way that <laughs> I had been kind of struggling for two weeks with creating things to do with him on a daily basis. And I went to the Patents Tech uh, Expo last year. I had a Lesson Picks account, but I hadn't really been into it to play around with it very much. And so I went to, to the Patents Tech Expo. I saw Lori speak. She presented um, and just did like a really quick little demo. And with it, do that again. <laughs> I walked out and I felt like I had the world <laughs> was in my hands. Like I went home that night. I opened up my computer. I made a ton of things for the next week. It did not take very long to make. Everything um, was really engaging for that student. It just really opened the doors for me as far as not only visual schedules, but just visuals in general and how I was going to take the instruction that we were trying to provide him and his IEP goals and how I was going to rework those to really meet his high interest um, and to really get that engagement piece going. It was huge. Cool. That was that was just last year. That was last year. That yeah, we that just happened like last March. I was with him for a couple of months in the spring. Um, he was one of mine that I stayed with him for a long time. And um, yeah, we saw some we saw some really great things happen for him and, and some definite improvement and, and more engagement. Um, so then so after, you know, after that experience, I have a, an awesome instructional coach that I work with in Carmel. Her name is Paige West. She's our instructional coach for all of our um like some of our specialty programs, some of our classrooms that that look a little bit different than your traditional classroom. Um, and she started to use it. And we really got into this conversation about how this was a tool that made a huge difference for us in a very small amount of time. And so we advocated that we could get that across the district for all of our special education teachers. And so we had that happen early this fall. And it's just been awesome to see Excellent. teachers that I think really struggled in the past to create their own visuals because it was timely or because it was just very, um, it just wasn't a super user-friendly way to get in there and get them, you know, printed off very quickly. Um, and just seeing a really big difference in teachers being able to get in, get something made and get it printed out or, or get it up on the board for a student. So awesome. that's always a good thing, right? I love to hear that. That warms my heart too. Yeah. Because that's what it's about is making it just so simple right. that that teachers, parents, anybody can just quickly make what they need. No pressure, just. Yeah. And, you know, just from the coaching perspective, there's a lot of times we'll get called in to work with a team and you know that you could, you know that you could bring some success to the table with a student, but you know, it's going to have to be really outside of the box and it's mm -hmm. going to have to look right. different from what it looks like from everybody else. And that is a lot to ask a teacher in this day of age, um, to start customizing everything. You know, some of these teachers have maybe only five kids in their class. Some of them have 20. And when you start getting into this territory where you're asking a teacher to, to specially create for all these different individual kids, that's, that's a big ask. Um, right. And it's really easy as a coach to come in and say, why don't you do this? And then you turn around and walk out and that teacher is left with IEP goals to progress monitor and behavior plans to manage and, you know, all the lesson plans to do. And they have a prep period this big every day. So right. any tool that, you know, that you can give the teacher the power to individually and independently create what they need to create, but to do it in a timely way where they don't feel like <laughs> it's a huge time suck is a really big deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Well, did, did you get, did Beth do a training for your group out there or have they not done that yet? Or did you no, do the training? We haven't done a group training. I mean, again, we're still pretty, I think, I think we just got the licenses back in like September or October. Um okay. So right it, now, it is, I mean, it is like, free. You should take advantage okay. of it. It is right. free. We'll and Beth does the calendar. And she um, loves me giving her more. I'm more happy to do. I love doing trainings for schools. I do. I love it. Because it's just like when teachers, they just, the staff that has it just feel so empowered when they see sort of the range of, of different things that they can do. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. if you take something off of your plate, we're happy. All right. We'll okay. yeah. Beth. Yeah, by all means. <laughs> And I, I think you know it's funny you you'd mentioned that we saw there's some there's a somebody in the comments that had mentioned using Boardmaker for visuals. I mean, there listen, most of our customers either are or were Boardmaker people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or they're new to the new to the the field. Um, Lori 
for uh -huh. years was power board maker user and that means i'm a power visual maker right yeah yeah right and Ooh. so over time the main reason we one of the main reasons that we started this was we wanted parents or gen ed teachers to be able to afford something to make visuals and over time that grew into something partially by i don't want to say luck because that's not right but we 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 got a, a feature set for speech paths it was just this this perfect storm for them right with the, the arctic tools and stuff but the real really the first motivator wasn't that at all it was it was, not, it was you guys and your parents right it was parents because we would spend forever teaching parents the power of visual and then having to make it for them because they right. were having years, challenges you had you had people asking for pictures years after you had their students we we did and they couldn't get their child in the car right. you know or their child from the car to the the school and so we were making just a simple visual schedule and i'll yeah. tell you if there's one thing that i could have in a class if i could have nothing else in my classroom, it would be a visual schedule. Seven. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I it was just having so that powerful. conversation last week about you can put in so much time and effort in creating a lesson and having the best intentions of how that's going to roll. But if you don't have a visual schedule, sometimes you can't even get that kid to the table. Right. So you've done all that right. planning and all that work for nothing. So the very first place to start is with that visual schedule. Um, it just lowers the anxiety of so many students and gets them in the right frame of mind of what their day is going to look like. And right. exactly. these adults are the same way. I mean, I think I, I told the story when I was on with Mike about how I have a standing morning Monday meeting. It is every week at 730. It never changes. And yet every Sunday night I open up my calendar to right. see you that I'm going to that meeting the next morning. Yeah. Right. yeah, we uh, do. That's So whenever, so whenever I'm calling Eric, our, our COO, and he's not answering. Right? The first question is, all right, what's his, what does he look like? Today? What's his schedule? What's it look like, like today? And I can pull up his. And I'm like, oh, okay. he's not calling me till five. I got it. Right. Uh, but you know, vi visuals are, are huge. And and I liked what you did with the, um, in that presentation, so in that presentation, Darla uh, talks about um, brain scans of, of Temple Grandin, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know whether that control was like the average control or one control or whatever, but it okay. showed that her visual cortex, her visual um, part of her brain lit up like 10 times as much as the, the other control and the, and the, the verbal was so much lower when you've got something like that, I mean, visuals are the only way to, to, to be able to manage things. Right. You so, can't argue with it. And when you right. go out and when you speak to people who have autism and they clearly tell you, this is what I need to be successful. Um, you can't argue right. with it. You can, yeah. you can talk the living daylights out of it and you're just wasting time. All right. Well, let's stop talking the daylights out of it and start, start showing some stuff. Um, so who wants to go first? Which of you ladies wants to go first? Well, I have Carla, nothing to show you, today at all. Did you bring, you didn't, you don't have anything. I do. I have a video I, I could show, but you said you do it later. So, so what do you think, Darla? Did you bring anything with us? To, yeah, your show I've, today? I've got a lot of stuff. If you want me to walk you through some stories and some, some, you betcha. Situations. I would love it. Do you want, you want your stream shown or do you want your, just the whole video screen? Uh, whole screen's fine. I'm going to so go back and forth between some tabs. So do you want that? Yeah, there you go. Hmm. Let's see. What do I need to do? Here, so? You are you sure the wrong window. <laughs> we can see you fine. Okay. Uh -huh. Do you have a like second it? screen? No. Ah, okay. so yeah, when you click off, you're not going to be able to we see, see it. We screen. see your screen fine and you look great. Okay. Your hair, your hair is lovely. Yeah. So you can see you too. No. Yes. Okay. You can see my screen. You can see my Google Drive pulled up right now. Yes, see your Google yes, Drive pulled okay. up. Okay. All right. We'll, yeah. we'll roll with this. And would, 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 you, would you rather me uh, only show your screen and not the video as well? No, this is fine. I, I don't can care. do this. This is totally work. fine. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let's just start. I, let's start. First of all, I'm working in an early childhood classroom right now. And so this is kind of where my, this is kind of where I'm living and where my brain is right now. Um, and this is a classroom that didn't have any visual schedules as of a couple of weeks ago. And um, like we were just saying, like, it's just a good first place to start. There are a couple of students in that classroom that are having some pretty big behaviors. They all look very different from each other. They all have very different disabilities. Um, this is a preschool class that um, is just filled with um, kind of a variety of kids. And you know, like I was saying, we're just finding that we have the best intentions and the best <laughs> activities planned for their centers, but we, it's very difficult to get everybody 
to transition at the same time um, and in a reasonable amount of time. So we're trying some different things in that classroom to kind of structure things up. Um, and the first place that we started was just getting a visual schedule created for all of the students. So using lesson picks, we went in and you guys offer so many different templates um, for different visual schedules. So we went in and we, we, we created a tray with everything that was gonna happen in these kids' days. And we let each kid pick out um, which visual schedule they wanted specific to themselves. So you had some kids pick out, you know, we had one student choose the monkey. I think we had one student choose mermaid, one student choose rainbow. Um, so you've got this array of all these different visual schedules that are up on, um, hung up in the classroom, but every kid had that opportunity to kind of choose something to make it specific to them and have a little bit of ownership over that schedule. Right. Um, and and okay. once you had everything in the tray, it took you no time to crank out four. Oh my gosh, it's so right? easy. It's right. so easy. And then of course I saved everything from that tray in an EC schedule um, group so that if we ever have to go back and create a new schedule, it's all just ready to go. Yep. One click um, and it matches the others if you get a new student or whatever. Yeah. Well, right. we talked about that. Like I talked about, and the other, the other, the other thing that we talked about is even creating it into an activity where we could have printed those off in black and white and let it, each kid color that yep. page and decorate yep. it themselves. Um, and, you know, you can adapt that if you've got students that, you know, have some fine motor difficulties. We talked about using stickers or using daubers or something else to decorate. So you're still going to get that individualized um, schedule up and going. So Kelly Suding says, I love that you said all of the students. OK, so, yeah. So this was something we kind of discussed as a team, though, because really I was sent originally to focus on one student. Um, and that was the student that was really having a hard hardest time transition in the classroom. And so when we talked about doing these schedules, I know there was a little bit of conversation about, yeah, but he won't do it. He doesn't want to look different from anybody else. Um, so then, you know, naturally, well, why, why don't we just do it for everybody? Everybody right. could benefit from it. Like yeah. I said, I enjoy a visual schedule. So why not just do it for everybody? And I have a, a background as a BCBA. So one of those evidence-based strategies that I really like to rely on is the peer intervention, the peer modeling piece. Um, you know, these kids, they have adults that are in their ear, especially when you have a student with special needs in a public school, there is usually some sort of paraprofessional, there is a group of therapists, there are teachers. It's just sometimes a bunch of adults doing this all day long. So I love when we can find those natural opportunities to have peers modeling for the students so it's not an adult doing it. So right. when you put up a visual schedule for everybody in the classroom, you know, I said, you know, maybe this girl and this boy don't need it, but I know them. I know they're going to they're going to catch on to this immediately. And then he's going to watch what they're doing and then he's going to start doing it. Right. And it took a couple of days. But when I went back last week, there were a few times I saw him. Um, he was the first one over to check his schedule a couple during some of those transitions. So, Alyssa um, Warren just posted uh, peers are so much more motivating than adults. It's always hard to break into the adults. Yeah, right. especially if you have one of those kids in the room where, you know, they're not, they, they don't want to take that adult direction. They don't want to look different. I mean, this is a, this is a four-year-old who already is being very vocal about that's babyish. I don't want to, you know, why, why do I have to do it? Nobody else has to do it. So right. exactly. yeah. Yeah. And it, that's, yeah. And we've seen yeah. it with students who look like, you know, with, with, um, autism that look like they're not even attending to their peers. Right. But when the peers are do doing it, right. Then suddenly you're like, they are, you know, they are, they know exactly what's going on in the room. Yep. And it and takes then they time, start, right? Like, yeah. it, just like with everything, the first day you hang up a visual schedule, they might not grab yeah. onto it immediately. You have to teach it. You right. have to do that gradual release piece where you're actually teaching them to understand why it's there, how we use it, um, how they're going to benefit from it. Um, and so, you know, one of those pieces that, you know, we try to talk to teams about is, because they'll say like, well, we put it on the schedule, but he's not going to do it. Fine. Right. <laughs> like we're right. not there yet then, right? Like right. he might not do it, but he at least understands what's going to happen next. So maybe you're going to avoid a big blowout behavior in the meantime, because he knows if he can just sit and wait and be patient or go do something else while this center is happening, that the transition to recess is happening next, um, as opposed to some of these kids that, you know, that you get them, you get them <laughs> into a bad place and it's hard for them to recover for the rest of the day. Right. Yep. So anytime we can give them that opportunity to, to pull it back together and get back into the flow of things, that's a win for everybody. Um, yeah. So, so the other thing I was going to show you. So while show I'm me. in the classroom. Let me show me. 
I'm working, you know, I'm working with this one kid. We're, we're doing the visual schedules for everybody. In the meantime, we have a student in the classroom who is very, she's, she's very bright. Um, she's very ambitious. And I think she's a little bored. Um, and she doesn't like to wait during transitions. And she really loves adult attention. Like we know that that is the function of her behavior. If she could have an adult sitting next to her and engaging with her all day long, we probably wouldn't see very many issues from her. Um, but you know, we can't, we can't have an adult with her all day long and there are other kids in the classroom that need a lot of attention. So something that I would like to start trying out with her, I'm going to pull this up. We started off by providing her with, I wanted her to have a way to communicate in a more functional way that she needed a break as opposed to running around the classroom and knocking chairs over, which is how she was getting attention to take some sort of functional communication card and go up to somebody and signal that she needed a break in the sensory room or that she needed to go for a walk or that she wanted a break from whatever was happening in the circle. So we created those visuals for her. And when I came back in the next week, the staff said, okay, yeah, but now the problem is she's using them all the time. She wants a break all the time. She doesn't want to sit through anything. She's asking us to take her. And mm -hmm. you told us that yep. we had to honor it. So now that we're taking, now we're taking her on breaks all the time. Um, great. <laughs> we have replaced knocking chairs over with a kid handing you a card and saying they need a yeah, that's, exactly. That's a huge step one, right? <laughs> that right? Well, like, yeah. okay, check right. off. You know, that's on our schedule. We, that's the first thing we need to do. We can check that off. Now you're right. It's time to take it to the next level. Right. Um, so what I'm thinking for this kid, now we need to kind of structure it up a little bit more for her, what these breaks are going to look like. Um, and so I was thinking that we could use a kind of a different kind of, I really like to look at these schedules kind of out of the box way of doing a schedule. And because she loves adult attention, she loves games. If we gave her this tic-tac-toe board, and these are all the things that are going to happen during her day. Mm -hmm. But if we go in and we present it and say, you have to get three in a row before you can hand us one of those cards, I think that's going to be worth a try. <laughs> look at best face. Oh, <laughs> Gamification of a visual schedule. I am, I like bow down. There bow you down. go. Me too. Yeah. I am. That's a huge one. compliment. Thank love. you, Beth. Um, it's something. just something to try. It might not work, but it it's it's a, it's a next step to try and attempt. Um, I have a feeling like this kid just loves attention so much that if this right. is something that staff gets excited about and kind of creates a special bond with this is our thing. And this isn't, this isn't anything anybody else is in the room is doing. This is just our thing. And I that's have a feeling means. that that's going to get us to the next step. I think Paige meant visual. She says, Oh, that's a cool, cool idea for a casual, but I think she means visual. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's cool. So, okay. So that's kid number two in that classroom. Now I've got kid number three in that classroom, <laughs> which is a student um, on the spectrum. She can't see these comments. It's great. Um, <laughs> so, so if you, so I'm putting up go back and read them later. your friends. Um, oh, are my friends here? Hi guys. <laughs> okay. This means you have to, because based on what Kelly said, you've got to make sure that these are uploaded to the sharing center. That's right. That's right. That's right. She said everybody's now going to stop Darla's lesson fix creation. Right. Yeah. But you need to put it, and then Lori, we can show people how to find Darla's stuff. We'll teach. Can. We'll teach Darla how to use a sharing center before the end of the session. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, so, there's so many nuances. It's just. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Show, so show, us, show us more stuff. Number next, okay. So here's my next idea. So I've got this other little kiddo on the spectrum in the classroom, and he is just adorable. But he, um, he's, he's the kiddo that you can have a daily schedule, but that is going to be too much for him. He really needs something broken down into just a few steps. Um, and he is the one in the classroom that they keep telling me, well, he's never going to go and check a schedule. And they're right. He's probably not. He has a really difficult time with transitions. Um, even if you were to show him a visual to go check his schedule, like we're just not there yet. So we talked about the need, like the, the schedule is going to have to come to him. He's not going to cross the room to go and check it. We're going to have to have something portable that we bring over to him. And even more than that, we're going to need to show him more of a task analysis or, or what I call a mini schedule um, versus that big, long daily schedule. So for this kiddo, he's having a really difficult time sitting through centers. He would much rather go over to the area where the toys are and he wants to play with the toys. Who doesn't when you're four years right? old? <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, you know, we're kind of in, a, in a, an environment physically where you aren't able to hide all of the toys. Um, and 
you know, public school. It's not like we can't really stop him from, from wandering over there and trying to play with the toys. But what we can try to do is we can try to interrupt that process. And we've talked about instead of him coming to the table to work, we bring the work to him. And I started thinking about how we were going to show him just a mini visual schedule of, of the tasks that he needed to get done um, before he was able to take that reinforcement break. So typically with a student like him, we might look at like a three drawer system, like a work system where he had one, two, three to get through. Um, I just don't think we're there yet. And I think that's a lot to ask the staff right now. So I have this idea where we could instead, um, so you guys have the bookmarks, right? Yep. The bookmarks that's what I thought those were. Yeah. Yeah. I was like um, so excited about the bookmarks as a schedule and a right. schedule. So the other challenge we're up against in my district is we're really kind of buckling down on how much paper we use and the printing mm -hmm. that we do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a hot topic right now. Um, and everybody knows it across the district and, and, and I get it, like certainly don't want to be wasting paper, um, but in the spirit of not wasting paper. So here are the five centers that he might be moving through over the next couple of days. So I've got it all on one piece of paper now. I print off this one piece of paper. I cut up the strips. And now we've got that mini schedule to go through for those centers when we bring the work over to him. Um, you know, we tried we tried some of this last week. I didn't have the visual yet, but we tried bringing the work to him and having him do the one, two, three before he was allowed to get that to that reinforcement break. Um, and he he cried the first time, but he did the work. <laughs> he cried right. as he got through it, but it got done. Um, but again, like you, you have to expect some of that in the beginning. You're going to get there. Um, you've got to get him in the flow and the routine. So I would like to really give this a, a good a good go next time around. Yeah, that's absolutely great. <laughs> and then another outside of the box schedule, that student that I was talking about earlier um, that I worked with so much last spring, he was a kiddo that um, autism. Look at you and... saving ink. Save an ink there. Look at that. She turned <laughs> off the background for this one. That's why we do the black and white versions on so many because, yeah. Yeah. you yeah, know, I, I didn't have any color ink at my school. Um, I had to buy my own color printer. So if I printed something, done you. It was, yeah. it was very that's special. Bad. That's a lot of places. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of places. It's a real thing. Um, I did have fifth graders who were willing to come in and color for me when they volunteered. So I, well, that's <laughs> that's a great way to yeah to use student volunteers right there. Yeah. Definitely, I, it's funny. I didn't you know, mean to interrupt you. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you. you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. That that doesn't bother me at all. Um. Okay, so this kiddo, he was just really struggling. I knew I was going to be with him for the long term. And I not very naively, <laughs> the first week I was working with him, I didn't have, the class didn't have a visual schedule for him, but the, but the speech language pathologist did. She was using a visual schedule and she was using it really successfully with him during therapy time. And it was just a one, two, three, and then they ended on a game. Um, and because that had been working successfully for him, I thought, well, great, I will just take that and run with it. And she was using lesson picks. I got on, recreated it, took it in to work with him the first day. And it was just he and I in a room. This was a kid that was just really having a lot of trouble. Um, and so myself and um, another another uh, coach that I work with were kind of coming in to kind of wrap our arms around him for a while. And I put that visual schedule out in front of him and he destroyed the classroom. Oh, and no. he was screaming the whole time. This is not speech. You're not the speech. <laughs> um, so that was just a really student. good reminder, right? Of how concrete <laughs> and right. literal some of our students Very literal, were. yeah. <laughs> it was just really black and white to him that like that visual schedule was not going to be what he and I were going to be using. <laughs> um, and so I had to really kind of think through some different things with him. So we started using the treasure map as our visual schedule. We used it on a, um, a field trip and that like that went really successfully. That was a great trip. We didn't have any problems. Um, this is a kid that, you know, obviously he can, he can get pretty worked up over some things. So this just became our schedule that we used for work. Um, and then I, like, he was the kiddo that I came back after, after listening to Lori um, at that tech expo and just really started crunching out a lot of different materials for him. He needed things done so differently. Um, so you can see right here where it says place value. This was a kid who he loved technology, not necessarily. I mean, he likes to get on a computer and play on a computer, but he loves to talk about technology. He loves to get into the settings of any sort of device that he has and explore the settings. He was obsessed with web browsers. So 
he had a place value goal in his IEP and we needed to work on place value, hundreds, tens, ones. Um, and he was just having a really difficult time. I, I couldn't, I was, we were not making any progress on that. Um, so it just got to the point where we made flashcards and I did that using lesson picks also where one's place was going to be Safari, tens place was going to be um, Chrome and hundreds place was Netscape or something, I don't know, something crazy and old. Um, and we used the Netscape? flashcards and I would just Net write. Are you old words. enough for Netscape? You're not even old enough for Netscape. I'm old enough for Netscape okay. though, All right. believe Fair it or enough. not. That's very flattering that you think I'm not, but I am. Well, you floored me in the beginning when you said you did 10 years here and 10 years there. I'm like, you're not 10 years out of school. <laughs> oh, but I am. <laughs> I am. I feel it too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so so crump, crunched out those flashcards for him using, you know, that's a special interest of his. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we were able to get through a week of working on place value because he had that visual in front of him that, right. that was very enticing to him. Excellent. Um, he loved Bitmojis, like that was a big thing, but he was also a kid that required a lot of sensory breaks and a lot of movement. Um, so we kind of got into the flow of, you know, one, two, three, and then we would take like a sensory break out in the hallway, but we were doing them so often. I mean, his schedule of sensory movement was so short. We needed to take them so frequently that I wanted to make that time in the hallway meaningful for him. Um, so we started doing Bitmoji hunts where, you know, maybe he had to do a tally board. Um, and you guys have that tally mark. Um, we do. Mm -hmm. got tally have that in you can put in your own pictures. That. So put in your Bitmojis, you right. know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so, you know, making it somewhat functional when we were walking around around the school, taking our wagon break, or sometimes he would ride a bike or on a scooter board. Um, just something that he had to keep his eyes open for. And I would hide different Bitmojis around the school so that he had to kind of go on a on a hunt for them. Um, okay, so that's it for, for my visual schedules. And then I had a few other things if you guys want to take a look. Well, we have some visual schedules. Lori's got visual schedules to show. Well, oh, all right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, you want to see hers, don't you? Do yeah, I have, I mean, you everybody have to, to see do mine to... all the time, but I don't get to see Darla's very often. All right. But I do have the same. You did pick one of my favorite um, non-schedules, the treasure map. Right. Um, so let me put us over the here. same way. And I used it's it so all fun. the time. Yeah. And what's really nice about it is I would use it on the smart board for the whole class. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody would get up there and they could trace, which means, and I have little dots on the ground for them to stand on. So they're crossing the midline. They're doing giant movements to trace along and they're describing the sequence of our day. So, you know, there's so many concepts and that's the the big point that I'm constantly trying to teach to teachers and therapists is visuals aren't just for behavior or for communication or for right. independence or for curriculum. Like there's layers. And so when you talked about doing it with the whole class, yes, one student might be really focusing on independent functioning and being able to transition from one point to another. But another child might be working on language or sequencing. Like it, it gets very deep. So that's what I love about like all of these ideas and putting them together. But the the treasure map is a lot of fun, very motivating. So there's a great video we have of Lori, um, of On Lori at a, at a, um, at a smart board. No, you were at a great big smart board. International Talk Like a Pirate Day? The International Talk Like a Pirate <laughs> Day. She made one of these and then she had the kids go up. That's what they and did. The OT, so Alyssa Wern and Judy Schoonover, you would totally love this. So she, she had one of these on the smart board and the kids would move their, their whatever it was they were moving, they'd move themselves along physically on this thing. And then you had a place for them to swab the deck with a broom. Yeah, that's you had... that was an OT activity for Talk Like a Pirate Day. So much fun, but it was nice to the fire give the, the cannons. kids the vision of the expectations what they were of gonna what do. they're going to do. Right. And so when they went up there, they loved it because they're on the smart board. And then I also use on the smart board a lot of different things to draw with. So the markers draw, but so do other things like a tennis ball or anything, a dinosaur. <laughs> I have a whole box of props the kids can pick out and get up there. And, you know, depending on each child's needs and what mm -hmm. we're working on, what kind of grip they're working on get up there and trace and walk through and the language. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Are you going to talk about like a pirate for, for Kelly suiting? <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Kelly. Don't engage with her on that. Not, not today. <laughs> not today. So, um, so,
we, we absolutely are big fans of using the visual schedules. So there, there's two things here. One is the visual schedule schedule, visual schedule template All right, can be used here. for lots, anything that you're sequencing, right? Right. But also there's so, lots of things we can use as visual schedules, like I printed a million you things do it that, way? We'll do it that. that um, are visual schedules. And I love how you showed them up. And I love the fact that you talked about student interests, you know, that you really got what the kids want and let them pick. Mm -hmm. I think Kelly asked a question up earlier. Was it yeah, Kelly? Uh, she asked about how you chose. Do your teachers do interest surveys to know what visuals to create that is specific to them or just mul multiple options that they can choose from? Darla. Yeah, it depends. I mean, I actually overheard a shout out to Paige if she's still on here and Ann Sweet, my my sure, why would she leave? partner. So. Um, I actually heard overheard them having a conversation with a teacher at the middle school today about sending home an inventory so that an inventory checkoff list for for parents um, to also assist with figuring out what high interest um, you know topics were going on with that kiddo at home when they were looking to add in some extra interventions or some extra supports for that student. That was. Um, I think having a little tough time at school right now. So it yep. depends. I mean, you know, you know, it's interesting when I went, <laughs> when I'm going to get nerdy here for a minute, when I was in school getting my BCBA, I had a research project where I had to read, um, I had to read up on research on preference inventories and surveys. And there was research that showed, I wish I could, I wish I could ref, like reference it specifically right now, but the, the gist of it was when they went to survey, teachers to see what they thought kids interests were teachers were not getting it right we made oh, yeah. a lot of assumptions a right. about what what is what is exciting and fun for a kid and so many times like when you actually went and did like a preference assessment like a structured preference assessment with a student right um sometimes not even getting in the in the right function you know where some students are looking more for that tangible but other students are looking more for that sensory experience um others just want that you know that verbal affirmation um, a lot of times we don't get it right. So it is really right. smart to, to structure that up sometimes and dig a little bit deeper. Um, exactly. But I think what I see more often is teachers will say like this kid that I worked with um, last year was a good example. Like he loves bitmojis. Well, we, you know, how, how are we going to incorporate that? I don't want him to have a cell phone all day long and I don't want him right. to use my cell phone. So how would we, you know, what would we even do with that? Um, so it takes a little bit, again, outside of the box thinking like, that was something that I let him help create on my phone with me. And then I would go back and print them all. And then we had paper versions of everything that we could use so that we were still, we used it to work on social emotional learning activities so that he could better understand emotions of others and his own emotions and how to handle those emotions. Um, why not use what they are telling you <laughs> that they will sit that down. Exactly. 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 I, I want to see more. I'm, I'm looking at these and they're killer. So, so, so Lori's got a handful of stuff that she needs to see, show. Okay. Well, I'll just, I just, I printed a lot, but it's not all for you. I'm in the middle of preparing for the CEC conference. Whoops. Ah. My bad. So um, a lot of these things, but I figured I would go ahead. They're and... awesome. I mean, they're super <laughs> awesome. You'll see. <laughs> so just on the visual schedules alone, if you go there, you do picture schedules and you say, what can I make? Here's an absolute ton. And we get ideas all the time. And some of these are even meant to inspire ideas that you can expand on. And what I mean by that, let me give you an example of that, is one of our schedules is called a frame schedule. Can I but, show it over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But you don't have to frame it with our box. You can literally frame it with anything that right. you want and then put move the strip across inside. I think, I think Judy Schoonover... Wasn't she one of the ones who did something ridiculous? With you know, this? Judy's an inspiration to me. Like always, um, always. I got right. more Judy things to come She's along. This girl. might be pre-Judy as far as that goes. But we've taken that further to like a barn. But I would probably make this as a bigger barn and print it on, you know, eleven by seventeen or make it more visible. But this is a great starting point. Kids can move along. So the first person to mention this to us was Allie. I think Allie, Allie was the one that, right. that did say the and, before and after of the barn. So you can talk right. about that sequence of, of right. activities. And then you got Judy's inspiration comes with things like adding texture, adding dots, adding anything that makes it more powerful. 
So here I just added just little beads that the kids want to touch as they walk through the schedule of the day. So much fun. And it, it's like the little idea. stuff that you're like, oh, sweet. Yeah. And this is uh, this is actually one of the schedules, right? The pipes. That is a pipe. It's just like Mario World. Yeah. Uh -huh. And all of these are our picture schedules. Another one would be the flap schedule. Like you talked about making interest areas using stickers on top. Those are from those are from Zootopia. I like Zootopia. I know. I like it's I like the sloth. The, Where's the sloth? The sloth is he's not there. He wasn't oh. in my sticker sheet. Oh, how do you miss that? How do you miss that? So, but yeah. So the, these are again. You open them up as you need to do them, and they've got little pieces of. Uh, this is not um, ah. crow. It's what is that stuff? So let's talk about. It's that the stuff they use to hold the the. The things on when they send you the mailers from the real. <laughs> They're called dots. And here's the trick with dots. So you have a trick. I do. And okay. it's something I it took me a minute to learn. These dots say permanent. So when you go to open your flap, they don't open because they're permanent. So you really need to pay attention to the dots that you're using. Whoop, there it is. Um, and make sure they say something like removable or um, repositionable. Gotcha. Right? So dot so preference. These say uh, repositionable right here. Yeah. All right. And so these are little things she uses to hold things down. And Dots stuff. are the new Velcro they, saving they money. Are. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then what is this guy? Well, the only thing that I added on this, again, uh, the interest uh, area. A googly, yeah, googly eye. eye. Googly eyes are so powerful. How many <laughs> times do I use googly okay. eyes? And then... Um, the rest of these are schedules, and again, adding little things to it to make it more tangible where you're moving things up using interest areas. I think I saw in your presentation use of like Marvel characters or, um, you know, movie characters to put yeah. in there. But I love it. that. I love that you're showing them pacing through because that's another thing that we talk about. Like you, the kids have to you have to have some way to signal when something is done or when you're moving on. So you, right. need to, you know, you have to have that all done pocket or you have to have something that's showing that you're moving forward um, and to give them that independence of managing it themselves. That's a cute way of doing it. Exactly. Gotcha. Now, this is a Judy. This is 100 percent Judy inspiration. Um, this is using a different template. This is our scales and ratings template. Uh, and so we're going to transition here. And what Judy's idea was to put a pipe cleaner in there with a bead on it that you can move up and down. Right. And she How originally did this with this? Um, voice volume. Where is your voice volume right now? And the, the kids could self, you know, self assess. That but looks like a, too. that looks like a sneaky way for an OT to get a little bit of fine motor. Those um, OTs are sneaky. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, they are, they, they yeah, are, they okay. are super sneaky. And, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, but, but, but it's simple to make, right? You just put a, put a pipe cleaner through. Cheap. Hey, now we make these. Well, we make something very similar to these in our in our booth uh -huh. uh, as well. What you got? So the next little stack of stuff, and there's a ton of stuff. Oh, one more thing on the schedule, real quick. So, so if you study Benjamin Franklin, he always made a schedule, and it's how he became so productive. And we did this for Benjamin Franklin Day, um, and this was his actual schedule. So it's kind of neat to compare your schedule to what Benjamin Franklin had done. Very cool. <laughs> So all right, so I'm going to fly. You're skipping this one. Well, that is leading to this next section. Oh, all right, never mind. Give me the because next one. The you reason show. why you want to show that one is it's a board game. It's bo Oh, that's from the board game section. It is not a visual schedule. So, when thinking out of the box like you did with the treasure map, I love the fact that um that is something different, right? Something mm -hmm. of interest for the kids. And here's a Pac-Man video game. This is not following a sequence. So sometimes you might have to be open to flexibility of the tasks that are doing. Like they need to get these tasks done, but they don't necessarily need to be in a sequence. So on this board game, the kids can move their little Pac-Man piece. And as long as he chomps all the pieces, we're good, we're happy. Um, I mean, yeah. That's this is cool. a, this is a like template of a board game. And everybody's going to freak out because look at all that black ink. But Lori, <laughs> Lori didn't waste any of our black ink today because this. I have a new. new so, so, yeah, new, new trick. So these two pieces of paper cost the same at Staples. Look at that. So she, hmm. when she's got something like this that she wants to print and laminate. She gets them done over at Staples, and it costs mm. probably less than the ink. You know, it it really was a surprise. And they look amazing. I mean, check this out. They I mean, look really beautiful. They look 
spectacular. Why didn't I go there right? early? All the <laughs> black ink. Well, and you laminate it, you said, right? So if you laminate it, you've got it forever. Exactly. Yeah. If you're going to keep, if it's something you're going to keep, mm -hmm. have it done over there because your your printer is not going to make it look that good. And this is going to cost you, I think if you do one, you're going to be close to a dollar. Um, it might be 40 cents if you do it on regular paper. These are printed on cardstock. Um, but nonetheless, if I laminate it, I'm going to use it again and again. Right. Exactly. So well, right. it costs. You, somebody somebody commented on your Facebook page. Or I saw it somewhere where they were talking. Who was I talking to? They talked about how they used your template for the wristband. And they used yes. that. Yeah. That That's was a cool. great idea. I love that idea. It's like a different you have one on? Schedule. I have one on. I love the wristbands. It can have yeah. the schedule of my day or sensory strategies or... Like, I mean, I've used them before for work. communication, you know, bracelets where like, how am I community, you've got... But I never thought about using it as a schedule before. I really liked that idea. Yeah, pretty cool. So I'm going to fly through these only because we want to get back to the other things. Yes, ma'am. But, um, well, I'll give them to you. So we have our dial schedule. A dial dark. made as a schedule. Right. So this where is... Where you circle that around. Right. So this is, again, what are we doing right now? Don't focus on all the other stuff you're supposed to be doing. What are we working on right now? <laughs> <laughs> So. Well, a lot of times the other things are overwhelming. So it mm -hmm. is nice to mask those things so we can focus on the task at hand. And again, getting to know your students and what they need. Right. Um, all of these templates that we're going to fly through pretty quickly are not in the picture schedules, but used as a visual schedule. This one is called a token board. And this is where students can, as they complete each task, put it on their token board. Yeah, these and are, it might have an I am working this, for are these permanent ones? Yeah, I did the permanent ones on that. Right. I'm busted. Right, never mind. <laughs> these these might come off if you had used the right dots. Um, but yeah, so there's those. <laughs> Tell me if you don't want me to demo things. Names as we walk through what we're doing. And this again is not under the visual schedules. Um, no, thing. there's so many mazes there. Mm -hmm. Again, to tie that language piece in. Really nice to walk through. Um, I am working for now. This actually is not a, a it's an example of a visual schedule, but it's really the hungry caterpillar and what he ate until he got to the end where he had that lollipop. I, don't, um, okay. I believe you. <laughs> so this is what I'm working for. This mm -hmm. is what I'm working for. And on this, I don't know what I did with them, but in Espanol. Yeah. Okay. But I like leaving blanks in there so that you can swap out and, and reuse the visual again and again without having it fixed of what they're working for. Gotcha. That's great. So one more. My day. My day. What else? That is oh, a themed me, me the, mat. Oh, this is a themed mat. There are a lot of different. It's not a bingo dauber? It looks like a bingo dauber. So we have bingo daubers as well. And again, that's when you don't worry about the sequence so much. Or mm -hmm. as even if they're completing the sequence, they can mark off everything that they've done and they can see it go away. Now, these last couple visuals, this is our monthly My calendar. Goodness. So now we're getting more complex, but it shows when their therapies are. So I love this. This is one of the ones I had the most work in. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know if you guys are using this, but like you can choose any month in the world. Any month in history, and you can make a calendar for it. <laughs> It'll make the right calendar. It'll be laid out correctly, and you can drag your stuff to it and lay it out however you want. And if, if you want um, not a whole month, but maybe just a week. Actually, this is the week. Let me give you this one. This is a week, Monday through Friday, and what therapies they have on which days. Very simple schedule to just take a glance at for a student who... And if, if, if the kiddos maybe can't read Monday, Tuesday, they can see from the... From, from this visual, you know, what day they're on, right? Yeah. Where they are in the in the week. I like that idea. So, Beth, did you have one as well that you wanted to I show? I did. I had just one one really quick thing to show, if we've got um, a moment yes, or two. Yes, ma'am. Do so, you want to share your screen or I your... Or to, the, yeah, I need to share camera. my screen. So, let me uh, share screen and... Oh my God, there's just too many things to do. Well, while she's oh, looking, here we go. I got it. You got it? Yep. I got the trifold. Uh, trifold one that you can oh, set on. Hold for on the one, whole one second, Beth. Let's mm -hmm. do this right. Well, it's yeah. the last one. We're so close. <laughs> the trifold tent um, is. And these are really, they're, they're nice because they're 3D and they're easy to put together. They've got a little slice here that you just fold over each other. And it's it looks the same. 
I did same front and back. You can make them different on the front and back. These are different on the front and back. Oh, I didn't make them same. Right, but if you did, they they would be correct. They'd be reverse order. Actually, to be so honest, I got correct. this from the sharing center. So, right. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> All right, Beth, what, what do you got going on here? All right, do you still, my, all right, there we go. Okay. So I actually, Darla and I were talking and she she had been talking in the in this uh, YouTube, uh, or I'm sorry, in the um, training that she did last week for um, the New Jersey, I mean, I'm sorry, the New Hampshire grant. She was talking about timers and uh, it had gotten me thinking about timers and um, and lesson picks. And if people aren't, a re aren't aware, one of the play tools that's available in Google Slides or in PowerPoint um, is the timer. I think it's probably one of our least used. I know I demo at the least is the timer, um, but it was making me think about visual schedules and how sometimes we need to give an amount of time. Um, so this is just, I just pulled up a visual schedule. This is one I actually like for um, older students too, right? Like Sometimes our desks are just a mess and we need to, we used to do this with um, like fourth and fifth graders in uh, my elementary school uh, that I worked at, like they'd have a time that we do our weekly desk organization. But what I did here is I took, so this is like a visual occluder. It's something to make sure, like to direct our um, thing to it. And all it is, is it's one of these boxes that's under the common tabs that I just grabbed and, and resized so that we knew what we were working on. But then if we go over to the play tools and we select the timer, we can obviously we would give kids more than five seconds in order to complete the recycling. But just for the sake of what we're doing, we can. Whoops, it signed me out. Let's sign myself back in. It's because I was setting it up and it was a little <laughs> bit ago. I talked I'm about showing this right around. now in um, PowerPoint, but I could I have it up in Google Slides, too. We can do it just as easily. And in the play tools. And in the play tools, right? Um, and so let's go ahead and put that five seconds back in there. And so I can have that, you know, so that we know what we're supposed to be doing right now. Okay, we're done with that. Now it's time to go on to the next thing and I can reset that and we can start. Awesome. So using that like combination of different things, we've got a visual schedule going on. We've got a timer so that we know, and this is the simplest kind of time you're going to get, right, is, is in our lesson picks. There's lots of fancy timers out there. But the nice thing is it's all on one thing. It's not, I don't right. have to pull up multiple tools. Exactly. And I've got this thing to help focus so we know what we're working on at that moment. And if I really wanted to really get fancy, I could go like back into my common and I could grab like a check mark um, and we right. could be checking off like everything um that we, you know right. as we were doing it right yeah. so well, for, just you know just one more way and again this is a pretty boring template although i i personally love a good checklist i live for a good checklist <laughs> <laughs> i can't go through my day without a good checklist mm -hmm. but it's just a really simple way to kind of combine things and provide that structure um, that kids need. And again, this sort of came out of, um, you know, based on what Darla was doing last week and a short conversation that we that we had. So just a second. I, I, I do want to add on to your comment about boring visual, because I don't think there's any such thing because visuals are so powerful. Um, I just so I went to a classroom the other day and I saw a lot of um, I saw not many visuals, but visuals that were used were busy and inappropriate. Um, I saw one visual that's like, I can use my ears, I can use my eyes. And it had like a plaid background and then a whole bunch of ears and a whole bunch of <laughs> font that was funky that they got off Nobody the TPT. Can read that font, right? And while it looks adorable for an adult who's saying, oh, I love all these patterns and colors and the whole thing you know what, it doesn't communicate your intention. And so some, sometimes we need a boring template that shows exactly the clear expectations. I love the box that you put around it to frame saying, hey, look here, right. you know, and then your checklist like, oh, all done, let's go to the next. Yeah. And I'm that person too, like I, the simpler, like if it was too busy, it would be too distracting for me to follow. Now I think that's different than appealing to a student's personal interest, like using Absolutely. the right. right or the, right. Right. I think those are two different things, but I agree a hundred percent, which is why I am such a checklist fan because it's so cut and dried and logical, right? Well, and exactly. None of the children 
I don't think kids in your special ed unit care about your gingham. It's there for <laughs> you, okay? <laughs> Sorry, that's the truth. And you can quote me on that, Darla. Okay. No, I mean, I think that's a really great quote because the truth is, I, I feel like especially in the field of education, you've got a bunch of people that think all of their materials have to be Pinterest worthy. Right. And right. our kids don't care. They don't care. And, and listen, we've got cute, cute stuff in there. But it doesn't uh, have to be. And if it's overwhelming, right. it's well, and I think, productive, right? Don't you hear people say like, well, I'm going to do that. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. And it's right. because they right. think they need to make it look like some huge yeah. professional so product teachers. where it's like, don't just get on. I did right. I did this in a, cl in a classroom yesterday. They needed a social narrative um, quickly and badly. And yeah. talk about slick. You, the, the way Lesson Picks is working with Google Slides right now awesome and so, you're, you're a fan I, I love it we have we have had i have been able to do that for four years for oh, the record. That's so uh, nice we have been I, for four years within uh, four, within four minutes i pulled up a google slide i dumped in a bunch of photos that this kid loves i made it personalized to him but i also was able to grab from lesson picks some other some other visuals i knew that were going to have to be in that story yeah. um and, you know, like I'm going to shout out to yeah. Jessica Conrad right now from Patents. I remember a couple of years ago, I was sitting in on one of her sessions and it was the first time I ever heard somebody say, stop writing with symbols. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, and I really went down this road of like, what does that mean? And why wouldn't I want to do that? That was yeah. that was like a big, whew, right? Yeah. Um, that was a that was different for me. I mean, I had to change some habits there. But once you start understanding why you shouldn't do that, um, that was huge. And so, yeah, so now it's just so easy to pull open a, a Google slide, use those visuals from lesson picks to supplement a, a social narrative, um, which are so powerful. Another one of those evidence-based practices that are so important to use with students and to help them process and prime for something. Um, and it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to take a long time. I, I knew that if we wait, like we could have been waiting for a month for somebody to write that social narrative. I just sat down and did it in four minutes and it was done. Exactly. I love it. Exactly. I was going to say um, uh, to your point on, you almost need a first then for those teachers to say first, it needs to be functional. <laughs> then it can, then be, it can be pretty, right? <laughs> so you can make that look actually better. we have um, a lot of people are commenting on the Google, the Google stuff. Um, I know. Shout out. Yay. Yeah. And um, I thought what I might do, cause I'm seeing this comment from Jessica Smith. I'm having trouble getting lesson picks on my Google mm -hmm. drive. I, I'm going to, since, since Jessica has been here for a while and um, uh, I appreciate your, your uh, joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to share my screen for a second, just to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about. So this is my Google slides. Okay. Um, and the way you get, so you'll notice that on the right is lesson picks. And if I wanted a picture of a uh, center time, I can do a search for it. I'd get centers. I'd click centers. It would load that image and it would drop it right into my slides and I could move this around, right? So all of our symbols are now directly inside of Google Slides. Um, Jessica said, I'm having trouble getting it to work on my Google Drive. Um, so let me show you uh, how this works. Um, oh, if you, um, oh, and she says, I got it on there. I can't log in. So first, if you really can't log in, go to the, the lesson picks help and, and uh, we'll, we'll work you through it tomorrow. But the number one most likely problem there is that when you go to, uh, when you go to, let's, let me log out here. Uh, it's on the first page. Let me log out. So when you go to Lesson Pick Symbols on the right here, you don't enter your email here, right? You enter your username right here by itself. So it's not, um, so you would be J Smith or Jessica S or whatever you are. Um, whatever it is. You don't are, know, it but could you're be not J Smith unicorn. at Carmel, Indiana .us or whatever. It is always just your username. That is the number one issue. If you still can't log in, the only other thing that it can be is if you have third-party cookies turned off, and uh, we can walk you through how to fix that uh, if you just shoot us an email at support at lessonfix.com. So um, we have a bunch of other folks who are happy here. Um, <laughs> I might do that, Kelly. <laughs> so that's not the T-shirt that I want, though. Um, so we've got uh, Darla. I've got a question for Darla. Did you ever use a digital version of your lesson pick schedules or visuals on iPads or other devices? If so, 
How closely do you replicate the printed versions? I haven't gone there yet. Um, I've just been mostly sticking to printed versions so far, but Beth and I were talking about that last week. So that's when we were talking about how you could use it for your full classroom and display it in front of everybody and use a timer. Um, and, you know, like all things, then that got my wheels spinning for like a million other ways, <laughs> other things that you want to project and use. And I got in and started playing with those tools and um, something I'd really like to try in connection with the printed schedules. Can I share? Can I go yes, over ma'am. here again? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's you there. You see me? Mm -hmm. So I'm in a, a Google slide, um, you know, thinking back to that early childhood classroom over here on this, if you use the spinner, yeah, I put in on my tray, um, I put in all the different visual schedules that those kids are using in the classroom since they all have like a different schedule. Oh, look at that. And I thought that this might be a way that we can engage them more during circle time because that is a time where everybody gets really squirrely and doesn't necessarily always have a, a way to interact very quickly. Um, so I thought this could make it a little more game-like where we could have this up, pulled up with, with slides open. Um, I know one of the activities they do every day is she writes out a sentence and they have to count out how many words are in that sentence. Mm -hmm. So if you just use this as a, as a template, um, wrote down the set, you know, typed out the sentence every day, and then you could have the kids come up and spin to see whose turn it was going to be to come up and interact with the board. Um, just might be one more way to kind of keep them focused and engaged with what's happening up here instead of back here. Right, right, right. I love that idea. Just a little mm -hmm. note on that is if you choose the spinner, um, you could get repeat kids, which is something you might want. You might want a child to go again and again. If you use the drawing out of a hat, it'll make sure everybody gets a turn. Right. So, you know, that's right. Decision. And it won't come up twice. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah, so have you seen the bear? You seen the You're right. That's because that's bear. something important to probably think about beforehand. <laughs> Did you? Bumblebee goes again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there actually are, if you go back to that for a second, mm -hmm. there you go. So if you go up to, instead of spinner, if you go to draw, draw cards, there's actually another really cute one. If you hit that scene, nope, oh. nope, you're going to get the hat. No. Oh, yeah, darn it. Yeah. Yeah. Do we talked too long. Sorry about that. It's all right. Oh my God, it's the longest password in the world. Um, my, I'm my very proud of you. In IT. Very I have very proud of strict you. rules about passwords around. That's right. <laughs> Ours are going to get stricter. We probably should talk about that. So uh, go to the play tools. Next slide. Okay. Next slide. We'll talk about that one. All right. I'm going draw to card. draw cards. Yeah. And then okay. instead of the hat, choose the bear. It's super cute. And we have requests for other ones that are, you know, in, in progress, kind of in beta. So. So when you click on him, you know. Oh. Oh. Thinking of a right. turtle. And it goes, hmm. hmm. <laughs> That's hmm. really cute. <laughs> yeah. So we have we have the bear, and then and you can make that full screen, um, make it a little bigger stuff. But uh, we got the and then again it won't draw things twice, right? That's, Which is okay. Important. That's that's really cute. I love that. Super cute. See, so much to get in and play around with. Right? Mm-hmm. That's it. Is it it goes deep. I love the fact that a parent can get on lesson picks and get the basic concept. Um, but over the years, it has grown to be exceptionally powerful and deep. There's a lot of nuances. And everybody seems to know their piece. Right. Yeah. You know? That's kind of neat, right? It is neat. So, all right. Um, we have a couple other things to talk about. Well, you better go quick because we're at our hour. We, we already hit an we're hour. Chatting, so Kath. it's officially happy hour. So for those of you who have no patience or have <laughs> other more important things to do, <laughs> feel free to bail on us. We won't be offended. But I'll watch the number and cry a little if it goes down anymore. <laughs> But we're going to um, we're going to open this up to questions and then talk about what happened earlier this week. Yeah. On the and I'm going to show a little video um, on the comprehensive literacy for all group. So is everybody here on the comprehensive literacy for all group? Dar Darla. Are oh you yeah, you have a book to hold up so we can see. Mm -hmm. I know you oh, have. I have it, does. but it's just out there. There, there we look go. At that. <laughs> so we have. Um, so we are going to talk about... We have, Alyssa Wern says it's an amazing story we're sticking around for. It is. So <laughs> Alyssa Wern is uh, the moderator, founder. I don't know, Alyssa, you can tell me. I know she's a moderator. I know she runs it. So um, this is a book study on Facebook that Alyssa Wern runs. And it is for the Comprehensive Literacy for All book. If you haven't read the book, it's... I mean, I've read the book and I'm an engineer. 
right? Bet's got it. She was she was waving it up there, right? Oops. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you go. It is a great book about how to teach comp uh, how to teach literacy and reading to everyone. Uh, good argument that it is the most powerful thing you can do for somebody with special needs is to teach them to read. I would I would agree with that a hundred percent. Alyssa's got the the group um, thank you link Alyssa. here. Thank you. And we are doing a round five of a deep dive starts next week. Um, but we are were called out last week by one of their members. Actually, um, by Alyssa. By well, <laughs> she's I, I, the one that's tagged Lori Binko. That's true. So no, Kelly Suding, right? So isn't this Kelly? Uh, I forget who it was. I th it might have been. The, I think it's the mom who who whose child it is. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then tagged Alyssa you. Wern tagged you personally to make sure saying, you saw it. Can you make Couldn't sure you hide. fix this, right? <laughs> So this this little girl and and she's amazing. If you're on this group, this little oh girl, my gosh, she's, she's she's so awesome. She power less than picks user. She's now. A, she's now right, and she is nonverbal. Um, twelve. What do you think, Beth? Eleven. Nine. Oh, no, she, not even. Her, I'm her, not sure. Her, her mom is very proud because she's here. Yeah, she's um, there. So oh. now I showed her name. I was supposed, <laughs> probably wasn't supposed to do that. So um, so uh, Nate G has no idea what we're talking about. So let me um, see if I can copy this. Like, it is a Facebook. Nate is a Facebook group um, that is about the uh, comprehensive literacy for all book, She's and it is nine. named CL for All. And little girl we're talking about is nine years old, but I have watched I her it. before um, because she's awesome. She is awesome, and I love she her videos. Yeah, she she makes videos where she goes into lesson picks searches and find the pictures she wants, copies them, goes over to Book Builder, Book Creator. Yeah. Which one is it, Beth? Book Create. She goes book, into Book Creator and pulls the book, book Creator, pastes the pictures, and um, and then records audio of herself speaking whatever's going on in that particular picture. And creates a story. Creates like, a whole story. She's it's beautiful. She's awesome. And um, we, she had a problem. She has this particular... Uh, stuffed animal, and she couldn't find a rainbow unicorn owl in Lesson Picks. And I was shocked that we didn't have that. Right. Well, what's up with you? I know. How could I so, overlook a <laughs> rainbow unicorn owl? Right. So, so we, um, <laughs> so I, we, we, Lori decided to draw it, and um, I don't know if I, I think I might have suggested to you, let's make a video of how, or did you just do it? No, you did you not. Did, to be honest, it's been Judy Schoonover who is oh, said, that troublemaker again. That troublemaker, she causes me so much trouble. Ah, she's the worst. She's so worth it. She's the worst. Um, but she's we like, love I love you. We love you. Yeah. <laughs> she had said back at AOTA a year ago that um, people would love to see behind the scenes on how the symbols are created. Right. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, yeah. sure. I, I never got around to it because life right and like that's not something you prioritize like yeah someday <laughs> well and there are people who think we shouldn't show it because it's like secret sauce but it's totally not secret sauce because secret sauce. they'd have to do it eighty thousand times and then hire a programmer to write lesson things it would be harder it's no longer secret sauce right um but we did make a video and i thought i would show at least parts of it so i set up the camera and i was drawing pictures anyway so i'm like you know what Judy said to record it. I think I'll do it just for her. Yeah. And um, recorded myself. And I only showed the segments that where I was working on this rainbow owl unicorn. There you go. And this is not the easiest picture. No, this is one of your harder ones. <laughs> this is so. a lot more detail. And Judy says, finally. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's yeah, about damn time. The best. <laughs> so you, you'd be proud of us, Judy. We are um, lubricating appropriately tonight. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's um, let's watch this just for fun.
All right. We, she's, <laughs> Lori's yelling at me saying, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. It's <laughs> really mesmerizing. It's like one of those, right? like those videos that people share on like Instagram and TikTok, like that are like, I forget what they're called. There's like a, an acronym for them, but it's actually very, like it draws you in. Mm -hmm. I like it. Right. So I've watched that for 12 years now. <laughs> it's such incredible customer service, what you guys are doing. Um, well, for people. we don't want to make that promise to everybody. You have to be as cute as that little nine year old girl. Well, that and shout out to that mom. Girl. Yeah, I don't know how I don't know if she pronounces it Karen or Karen, but what an amazing gift to share what her daughter is doing. Um, Absolutely. And such a perfect example of how you use multiple mm -hmm. tools to open the door and let let a kid produce what they want to produce, Absolutely. like not putting them in right. a box of just one way of getting it done. It's awesome. And I think somebody said in your comments, like if a nine-year-old can handle lesson picks, then yeah. anybody, right. can anybody can, anybody can right? <laughs> so, and she does great. She does absolutely. She does stuff that a lot of our customers can't do, like the exporting symbols and importing yeah. them. It's great. Right. It's great. So she blows me away. Yep. So we're all, we are all super impressed. So I love Kelly's comment too. Which, which one? This one? Yeah, when, Judy, when, you're when, right. It, it's when, not. So people will say, oh, like we get, we have thousands, tens of thousands of requests for drawings. So when people say, well, I need this Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you got to be really cute to get a Thursday. We're $36. You don't get a personal mm. artist who's going to have a vector symbol on hand well, she does. by Thursday unless mm. you're that. You got to be that, that I mean, awesome. Right. You got to know how to tug my heartstrings, and that's yeah, right. Alyssa did it, followed that was by yeah, everybody else. <laughs> so, so, so wait. So. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, uh, and I love Kelly's. I was today years old when a unicorn owl oh, gave me goosebumps. It's mm -hmm. awesome, right? Isn't that so sweet? Oh. So, um, I have had some technical questions about um how Lori does things, um. She draws them on with a pencil. She inks them with an ink pen. She erases all the pencil. She scans them mm -hmm. sometimes with the hand with the scanner. Sometimes with that neat little wand scanner that is kind of awesome. It's cool, right? It, it works travels well. with me. It so goes with her when we're at conferences or hotel rooms, right? And then um, she uploads them to Inkscape. She converts them to vector. Inkscape is the tool uh, that she you saw her moving the nodes around, colors them. Mm -hmm. Makes lots of different versions of some of them. I usually don't do that level of rainbow feathers. <laughs> so, and then <laughs> uploads them into the system that I wrote that adds all the keywords so that people can search for them by by sound and by everything else. I add the keywords, but yeah, the system then indexes them. And then immediately it's available for everybody to use. So yeah. hopefully so that by Thursday normal. usually doesn't happen. No, because they're it done in batches. Right. And I do feel and bad because some people might get their image pretty quickly because they're at the end of a batch and other people have been waiting, you know, a couple months or, yeah. or longer. And to be fair, we gotta be, we gotta be careful. So Lori drew the first 70,000 symbols mm -hmm. minus a few hundred. Mm -hmm. We have kid drawn pictures that are so awesome, which are awesome that are drawn by kids. But Lori went through the rest of the process mm -hmm. and then we just hired uh, another artist. Allie who's... Carson, who is she's showing me up. She is ridiculously yeah. talented well, and at SCAD studying art and design. Yep. Um, and she works for us now, too. And did a truly amazing job of learning to draw just like Lori. Yes. Like over the first few weeks, I could tell the difference because the eyes were a little different. And then I pointed that out. And now I, I've been watching Lori draw for 12 years drawing these symbols for 12 years and I can't tell the difference. Now. So, <laughs> it's really awesome. So, um, we, uh, so you have, you have fans, Darla. I know. Hi, Ann. Hi, Ann. Thanks for jumping on. So I am, I am thrilled that we were able to cover this much. Is there any, so first for those of you in the comments, if there are any questions like not, we love you, but I'm glad you love you, but uh, love any you questions too. you'd like us to make sure we ask Darla before we're done, uh, tell us right away. And then Beth, um, is there anything that, that we need to cover that you have not heard us Best talk thinking. about? Uh, nothing I can think of off. The Other than you need to schedule Carmel, right? Yeah, we, that's yeah. all. Yeah, we, get, we 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 gotta we gotta make a date, Darla, you and I. So, so but, just yeah. to, to remind everybody, any size group gets free training. If you're under twenty or whatever the cutoff is. Oh. 
we try to group you with other groups so that we don't have to do a million little groups. Uh, but everybody gets free training, live training. Um, it will either be Beth or Eric Carson who um, does your training. And uh, we're happy to provide it because we want you to be successful. And then you'll always renew and be happy with lesson fix. That's right. It's a good we deal. We also offer a monthly training that Eric does um, for that anybody can right. go. And so yep. if you search the at lesson picks, you search in the search box. Here is an article about um, webinar training. You can search for webinar or training. Yep. It'll pop up and you can see when the next one is in that article. Yep. He I keeps think it up the next you. one is like. This Soon. week, there's one this week. There's, I'm pretty sure there's one this week. Would you like me yeah. to tell you while while Kelly tells it's usually us how, around how the awesome 18th, we are. 13th to the 18th, yeah, somewhere that's why in there. It was this week sometime. Yeah, I don't. It's it's in here. I'll tell you. So here, here's how you'll do. If you want ever want to find out where it is, this is what I'm doing. I might as well show you guys. It's mine. Yep. So you go to lesson picks. You go to articles. Uh, or you can just go right here and say articles and say training. Training. Thing. It and right. it'll say live webinar training and it tells you when the next individual one february 15th oh my gosh. at 3 30 p.m this wednesday <laughs> so click here to register if you want to go to eric's training that'll walk you through everything lesson picks has to offer and you can also see a little bit lower on that article is a recorded training that you can watch today oh that's true so oh, great yeah, you go. So that's last month's training or whatever the last good one, whatever, whatever the last one he thought was good enough to share was. And if you're just watching it, that's great. If you actually want to ask questions, go to the live one. Eric is really happy to answer questions about, you know, the, the Google add in or, or whatever it is. So we're amazing. They say so. See, we're game changer. You know, and it Dar takes a village. Yeah, that's right. Darla's amazing. And we couldn't do we it without on. everybody. Honestly, um, you know, Beth, Eric, our team, in addition to like the power users, right. the people, Mary, the people Houston, who are willing to come on and Kelly and Judy and Alyssa and everybody who gives us so much feedback. Right. And then even going, you know, Darla and everybody's come on Lesson Picks Live and further. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> so it's but been no, the best seriously. hour and 15 minutes, but a little more. Best hour and 15 minutes spent on a Monday evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. We're going to have to hire her at some point for some conference or something. But um, she just got a new job. She keeps, she keeps kissing up, you know. She was she used to just be like a mooch. She'd just hang out with us at the conference. <laughs> now, you know, she's saying nice things about us. So she's, she's she's kind of a big deal now. She's she was a squatter. A and, and closing now, the gap, right? wherever we went to eat, suddenly there was one more person at our table. Right? You know, she didn't to work be the fair, booth. To be fair, she's a lot of fun. She is. And she we is. like And you her lost around. her. I'm so sorry you lost her, but uh there you mm. go. So there you go. So squatter. We we didn't lose her. We've yeah. all got her number. We've got her yeah. number. We've got her contact. She exactly can't, she can't right. shake us. <laughs> squatter. All right. She well, my neck of the woods. She moved to Virginia, so we're making plans. There you go. Well, let's. You guys can do webinars together. So, I love it. All right, we're good. Um, I appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you for joining us, and um, Darla, thank you for being on. If you'll thanks for having me. This is fun. Off yet. Um, and uh, Beth, you too. But for anybody else, if you have questions we haven't answered, feel free to type them in the comments. We will come back in the morning after we've eaten something and answer them. And um, we'll be back soon we have a couple things coming up we need to talk about so i would say end of the month we'll do another one of these uh and uh more exciting stuff to come meanwhile i hope everybody has a happy valentine's day look at yeah. that oh, Beth. full of love there you go and friendship and caring and kindness excellent so i will um i'll see you all later and uh as always good luck and have fun we'll see you later in the month bye